Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K and we continue with the eyeball anatomy, the extraocular muscles. So today we will be discussing regarding the muscles of the eyeball in detail. So the extraocular muscles are the muscles of the eyeball which helps in the movements of the eyeball and they are generally categorized into two types that is the voluntary and the involuntary muscles. So the voluntary muscles works according to our wish while the involuntary muscles is carried out by the involuntary mechanisms. And here the voluntary muscles are as follows. There are four recti muscles namely the superior rectus, the inferior rectus, medial rectus and the lateral rectus muscles and two obliqui which includes the superior and inferior oblique muscles and the other voluntary muscle is the levator palpebrae superioris. So let's have a diagrammatic representation of all these muscles. So here this yellow color outline represents the orbit and the nose will be coming here. So this is the nasal side, this is the nasal side and this will be the outer side of the orbit. So the recti muscles are named according to their positions. So this one on top is the superior rectus, this is the inferior rectus, this one is the medial rectus and this one here is the lateral rectus and there are two oblique muscles. So this one on the top is the superior oblique muscle while this one on the bottom this one is the inferior oblique muscles. So these are the voluntary muscles and the levator palpebrae superioris as the name suggests it is located on the eyelid and which helps in the elevation or the opening of the eyelid. That's why it's not shown here because I have taken out the eyelids and I am showing all the muscles which can be seen within the orbit. And the involuntary muscles are the superior tarsal, inferior tarsal and the orbitalis. So these are the involuntary muscles. And let's see each involuntary muscles in detail. So the first one that is the recti muscles. The four recti arises from a common annular tendon or the tendinous ring of sin. So we have seen the annular ligament in other instances like uh, the head of the radius that will be articulating with the ulna by an annular ligament and uh, that we have seen in the upper limb. So similarly there is a common annular tendon or a ring like structure present which gives origin to all the four recti muscles and that ring is termed as the tendinous ring of sin while the lateral rectus alone has an additional small tendinous head arising from the orbital surface of the sphenoid bone so that you have to keep in mind all four recti arises from the annular ring annular ring and that is the tendinous ring of sin while the lateral rectus is having an extra head arising from the orbital surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. While all these recti muscles are inserted to the sclera a little posterior to the sclerocorneal junction or the limbus. So we have seen the limbus where the cornea and sclera meets. So just little posterior to that particular junction is the insertion point of these recti muscles. So here I have taken a sagittal section through the eyeball and the extraocular muscles. So here you can visualize the superior rectus and the inferior rectus. And this ring over here, this blue color ring represents the tendinous ring of sin. And the muscles arises from there. And finally, this is the limbus here or the sclerocorneal junction. So little posterior to the sclerocorneal junction you can see the insertion point of the superior rectus and the inferior rectus. So this is how the origin and insertion of the recti muscles happen. Then comes the superior oblique which originates from the under surface of the lesser wing of sinoid bone and 
at the insertion it passes through the fibro fibrocartilaginous pulley attached to the frontal bone then it passes below the superior rectus and inserted to the sclera behind the equator between the superior and lateral rectus so here you can see it it arises from the orbital surface of the sphenoid bone then you can see a small green color pulley mechanism here so it passes through that pulley then it goes below the superior rectus and finally attached to the sclera in between the superior rectus and the lateral rectus so this is the point of insertion of the superior oblique it rises from the orbital surface of sphenoid then it passes through the pulley mechanism then it runs below the superior rectus and finally inserted between the superior rectus and the lateral rectus so that defines the original insertion of superior oblique while the inferior oblique arises from the orbital surface of maxilla bone and it passes below the inferior rectus and deep to the lateral rectus and inserted close to the superior oblique so that we can see in the picture it arises from the orbital surface of maxilla this is the orbital surface of maxilla it rises from here runs below the inferior rectus then runs deep to the lateral rectus and finally inserted close to the superior oblique so that is the original insertion of the inferior oblique then comes the levator palpebrae superioris it originates from the orbital surface of lesser wing of the sphenoid bone and the insertion is having a peculiarity the flat tendon of levator palpebrae superioris it divides into two lamina the lamina means leaf like projections and one lamina is voluntary while the other one is involuntary so the superior lamella or the lamina that inserted to the anterior surface of superior tarsus while the inferior lamella the upper margin of superior tarsus so these are the insertion points of levator palpebrae superioris and that will be present on the upper eyelid the nerve supply of the extra ocular muscles so here you can see a mnemonic or a, like a coding by which you can remember the nerve supply of the extra ocular muscles so here lr6 so4 the lr stands for the lateral rectus which is having the nerve supply from the sixth cranial nerve that is the abducens nerve while so stands for the superior oblique which is supplied by the fourth cranial nerve that is the trochlear nerve and finally all the remaining five muscles are supplied by the third cranial nerve that is the oculomotor nerve so you can remember the supply by lr6 so4 the lateral rectus by the sixth nerve cranial nerve that is the abducens nerve superior oblique by the fourth cranial nerve that is the trochlear nerve and rest everything by the oculomotor nerve or the third cranial nerve and what are muscles for they are for movements so let's see what all movements are there for the eyeball so the movements of the eyeball includes the upward rotation that is elevation of the eyeball the downward rotation that is the depression of the eyeball the medial rotation of the eyeball which is towards the nasal side then the lateral rotation of the eyeball away from the medial side then in torsion and extorsion so these are the actions of the eyeball which are felicitated by these muscles thank you